What's going on, everybody? This is Broken Games HDR, and I'm going to give you my top 10 games of 2023. Pardon the voice, I'm a little bit sick, but let's get right to the list. So coming in at number 10, I have Armored Core 6. So I enjoyed this game. I thought it was decent to above average. I don't think I was high on it as everybody else was uh, because I felt that, like the levels uh, were pretty underwhelming. The story was seemed to be a little bit of an afterthought. The game was really about the boss fights. That's where it shined. But from level to level, the design just felt kind of underwhelming. I felt like this game could have been a boss rush game um, and probably turned out better, you know, because the levels uh, themselves didn't really offer much, in my opinion. So I got Armored Core 6 at 10. Uh, number nine, I got Robocop Rogue City. So this was a game that was not on my radar at all. Uh, you know, a lot of these games that are pretty much just licensed games by uh, lesser known studios don't necessarily turn out that well. And this game had a certain like element of jank and like low budget. But this studio, who has also done one of the Terminator games, they are a, 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 a case, an example of a studio that does a lot with very little, it seems. And they focused on what was important in game development. And I was just really uh, impressed by, you know, just the, how fun the gameplay was, uh, the story. This I never watched a Robocop film prior to this, and this game made me go watch uh, a couple of the films. So uh, shout out to the studio. Uh, I was really impressed by Robocop Rogue City and just really enjoyed the whole, uh, the, the whole experience. Uh, number eight, I got Jedi Survivor. So this game was really uh, marred by bugs, uh, performance issues on all platforms when it came out. Um, but behind all of that, it was actually a really good game, which is, you know, unfortunate because that's what most people remember it for first is, is how bad the performance was and how they rushed this game out months and months w before it was truly ready. I mean, I think we got like seven patches before the game was actually in a an acceptable acceptable state so it, it's really unfortunate that due to i guess uh you know the powers that be they wanted to get this game out before it was ready uh and, and that caused the game to kind of be looked at in a more negative light uh, especially to uh you know in, in a year where there was so many good games and so many competitors and that's why this game kind of became uh you know uh, some somewhat forgotten as the year went on but as a Star Wars fan, I did like the story, you know, great cast, some great combat and set pieces in there. Really enjoyable experience. Unfortunate it had all those problems at launch and months after launch. But nonetheless, Jedi Survivor, I got it at number eight. Number seven, I have Persona 5 Tactica. Everybody knows, or you should know, if you watch me, I love my tactical strategy, uh, you know, grid-based um, RPG games. And I'm not a fan of the Persona games, the mainline series. I've tried three of them, and I just can't get through them. I just don't enjoy them. They're not my thing. Uh, but when I learned that they were making, you know, something similar to XCOM, I was like, I'm all in. And I absolutely love this game. Uh, just, I, I love the, the, you know, the combat. Uh, I love that, you know, they put their, they still put their own Persona spin on it and it just doesn't play like everything else all the things that are all the elements and the mechanics that are in the mainline series that i've seen they've also found a way to include it in here and include a, a story that you can really understand and, and and really get the context to even if you haven't played the previous uh persona games and i love the art style so really enjoyed this game got the platinum forward and and, and everything from someone who does not like the, the mainline persona series um so that's why it's number seven for me. Number six, Hogwarts Legacy. I really enjoyed this game. People kind of forgot about it. It came out, I think, January or, or February, and it wasn't really nominated for a lot of things. And, you know, that could be for po political reasons. But regardless, I really enjoyed the game. Some people felt like it lasted too long. Some people felt like they couldn't finish it. It didn't keep them. I'm not a Harry Potter fan whatsoever at all. So it, it's funny, some of the people who were Harry Potter fans are the ones that I saw like didn't weren't really able to finish it. And me, who's never read a Harry Potter book in his life, and I have no interest in, in it, you know, I was really able to like get into it. I really liked the combat, you know, like 
you know, how you could switch spells back and forth and like juggle enemies. And I think the sequel to this game, the inevitable sequel, I think it's going to be special. I think they're going to capitalize off of like, you know, the, just, just the foundation that they, that they laid there and really begin to improve on some of those systems that they have in the game. Beautiful game as well. Um, I think they did go crazy with some of the, uh, the collectibles and the busy work and all that shit in the world that nobody wants to do. Relax on that in the second game. Get rid of all that, that unnecessary fluff and grind. And you got yourself. And, and then I don't think they, they're really going to be able to deny you some of the credit that, you know, Hogwarts Legacy really deserved. Number five. I got Mario RPG. Mario RPG, the original, uh, seven, you know, Legend of the Seven Stars, one of my favorite games of all time. So when this remake was announced, oh, I was so damn excited. And I, I, I think I was put in, I, beat, I think I probably beat this game in just a few days because I was putting in a lot of time uh, into it each day since it came out. And, you know, it, they don't do much different from the classic. It is essentially one-to-one, -one, but I don't think they needed to do much, you know, besides, you know, improve a few gameplay mechanics, make a few tweaks here and there. Of course, the game is, is, is beautiful. Um, it's a classic R RPG, and I just think they did a fantastic job just bringing back this classic, and I just enjoyed uh, every, mo every moment of it. Number four, I got Dead Space. Also a game that came out really early. Uh, you know, I, I'm hoping it was supported enough that we get a Dead Space uh, sequel remake. And I believe it was. I believe it was pretty successful. You know, uh, you know people supported it at launch and uh, went into Game Pass a little bit later, I think. But yeah, they just did a, another good job um, on, this, on this remake. Because, you know, Dead Space, it's, it's a game that a lot, surprisingly a lot of people, um, when the originals came out, a lot of people actually didn't give it a chance and, and didn't play it. So I'm, I'm glad it's getting uh, its respect now with a remake. And it's just one of those games that um, came out earlier in the year that I really, really uh, enjoyed. Um, you know, all the, the, the little minute changes, they still kept the atmosphere. They've made some improvements to the story. They added uh, some like side quests and things like that. So they did tweak the game and, and add things, but not too much. They still kept the core integrity of what the original Dead Space was, but took a few liberties, uh, which I'm really, really pleased with. So Dead Space is number four for me. At number three, I have Spider-Man 2. I really appreciated what Insomniac did with, you know, just improving uh, this game in, in every aspect, especially the traversal. What they did with tra the, the traversal in, in Spider-Man 2, it's like, who even needs fast travel? When you make fast travel, like something that's essentially obsolete and not really needed in the game, you really did something special with your traversal. Uh, they also, you know, just really uh, just found a way to improve upon uh, the, the, the combat amongst uh, Peter and Miles and while also still making it somewhat, I would say somewhat seamless uh, when you're switching characters. It's not like a big adjustment or, or a big uh, change in, in, in terms of like, uh, your muscle memory and your play style, even though they they are very different characters with di very different powers, it wasn't too jarring to switch between them. The game is beautiful. Uh, the story elements definitely like the direction they went in. So great follow up uh, to the original game that came out. What was that? 2017, 2018. Yeah. Uh, so that's number three for me. Number two is Resident Evil Four. I am one of the biggest Resident Evil 4 fans on the planet. I shouldn't have to explain this much. Uh, I've beaten Resident Evil, the original Resident Evil 4, damn near on every single platform. It's the game I've beaten the most times, like, in my life. I'm not somebody who necessarily likes to replay a lot of games. I can replay Resident Evil 4 nonstop and never get bored. It's like the, it's the exception to my rule that I don't really like to replay uh, campaigns. Um, but everything they did with this remake, listen, amazing. Uh, Visually, uh, you know, they, they, they took some uh, changes to the story. There were a few things, a few changes that, you know, artistically and I think aesthetically, I didn't, I didn't really like. Um, but I, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a huge, a huge issue. Uh, they, they came back with the Separate Ways DLC with Ada. That was great. Love the game. 
Um, only thing I I hate is that goddamn uh, speed run trophy that they got in there, and that's stopping me from getting the trophy, the platinum trophy. Not because I can't speed run, is I just hate the fucking concept of speed running a game, and that's the only reason why I don't got the platinum. But anyway, Resident Evil Four, absolutely fantastic. I love this remake. Nothing more I can say about it. Absolutely amazing. At number one, I have Lies of P. Lies of P is such a sleeper hit. I still think people are sleeping on this game. This game is not getting the respect it deserves. It's not getting the attention it deserves. If this game was made by a developer called From Software, it would absolutely be getting more attention. So that's the only flaw, major flaw of this game, is it's not made by From Software. So people are kind of sleeping on it. It's one of the best Souls games I've ever played. You know, from a studio, uh, NeoWiz and Round 8, that I wasn't even familiar with, that most people aren't familiar with, to just go from what they've made in the past, which is not necessarily anything super impressive or on this level, to go to making a Souls games that are better than the original creator of the Souls genre, better than some of the games they've made, not all of them, I would say, but it's top, I, I could argue it's a, probably a top three Souls game. And I just think it's a travesty that they are not getting more credit for it. Uh, for, but for whatever, whatever that reason is, it needs to get its respect. It needs to get its, its shine, uh, just like something like Elden, Elden Ring did, because it's, it's very impressive. It's very, very impressive. I love everything about it, all the elements uh, the, the combat, the, the mechanics, the story, the, the story is, is very good. And just, you know, the art style. Yeah. They, they need to get their respect. And I think what we're going to see from them in the future, they will start to gain that note notoriety and that respect. So that's my top 10 games of 2023. Let me know what y'all think. I'll catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.